what great fun to finally be reading these poems that have been done for a little while. This one, hopefully you caught the previous one, which is love all your sisters and brothers. And this one is just simply called joy. And hello, brothers and sisters. It is a great honor to be here with you guys. And um, <clears throat> I'm hoping you are staying strong, keeping, keep delving into the truth. And um, checking in on your neighbors, especially elderly ones, sickly ones, you know, keep your own immune system strong and powerful. Give thanks and stay in God's word. You know, take deep dives into your holy scriptures. And if you're, you know, and when you're reading the Bible, you don't, you know, yeah, you can, you can, of course, read Genesis. That's, it's beautiful in the Old Testament. But you want to, you don't read it like it's a novel. You know, start in the, um, you actually want to start in the Gospels. Because that's telling you what Jesus said. And uh, uh, the Old Testament is just telling you the promise. It's, it's all leading towards Holy Spirit. The promise of Holy Spirit. Which is why God is in each one of us. And thank you for Jesus. You know, it's all pointing towards Jesus, who then is steering towards Holy Spirit living within. Just invite it, just invite him in, Holy Spirit. You need Holy Spirit inside. Guide me, Holy Spirit. Dwell in me as I dwell in Jesus. That's all, just invite him in, it's simple. It's, it can be powerful, you know, yeah. you can get a um, baptized in fire, which is how Holy Spirit comes to you as a fire, not your hairs burning and singeing, as in fire. Just like when Jesus was baptized, this struck me the other day when I was reading about it. <clears throat> You know, a lot of the Hollywood movies, because especially, you know, in especially the olden days before CGI's, <laughs> it was hard to <clears throat> pull off special effects and make them look real. So as Jesus is getting baptized by John the Baptist, who was baptizing everyone in the water, um, it says that the voice came out of heaven and, you know, basically Jesus is my pride and joy, right? And then it, it came, but it came down as a dove. The Holy Spirit came down upon Jesus as a dove. That doesn't mean it was a dove and it landed on his head, even though some of the movies do it that way. That's it, you know. As a dove means it wasn't a dove. It came down. It came down. The energy came down as a dove, right? A dove's wings. So it came down. It's just people trying to describe it the best they could. What What is as a dove? Fluttering <clears throat> energies. And it must have rested on him, maybe on his shoulder. I think on his, probably on his head, because that happened later. At Pentecost when Holy Spirit came and made all the people talk funny anyway so everyone thought they were drunk right but they were each speaking different languages that the traders and the merchants and the visitors from all different countries all different language groups 
said, hey, they're all talking in my language. No, they're talking in my language. What? They're talking in my language. How did they learn that? And they didn't know those languages. Most of them <clears throat> just knew, what, Aramaic? Maybe some Greek? Maybe a little Italia? It wasn't Italia yet. What was it? Ancient Roman, whatever you want to call it, Latin. Anywho, so when, when it says as a dove, it was like a dove. It wasn't a dove landing on his head. Now, when Noah sent, what did he send? A raven, then he sent a dove. That was a dove. It, he sent a dove. It wasn't as a dove, you see? So yeah, don't read it. Don't read the Bible like it's a novel. Go right to the middle and then go a little to the right and you get to Matthew, Mark, Luke. John, doesn't matter really where you start, but Matthew is usually the first one of those four called the Gospels because those are the four books that were written by well, three of them were written by people that were apostles that traveled with Jesus. And then one, I think, pretty sure Luke actually just knew some of the apostles and interviewed them for his book. Because he, I think Luke, the Gospel of Luke was the Luke that traveled with Paul, <clears throat> which was after Jesus had already raised from the dead and ascended to heaven where he's still alive and that's the good news he conquered death for us to release the holy spirit so that he could guide us <clears throat> so basically you got jesus living inside you as holy spirit okay and and um also conquering death so we could live forever and so now he's sitting next to Papa, and he is, you know, defending us as the little liar is always attacking us. Almost like the cartoons, you got the little devil on one shoulder, and you get the little angel on the other. The little harp. Don't do that. You know that's not right. <laughs> take another sip of the water. I had a protein, strawberry protein drink for breakfast. <clears throat> it gets a little thick back there. I made it nice and thick with the ice and the frozen strawberry. So it was like, like a milkshake almost. <laughs> uh, good nutrition. That's part of how you keep your immune system strong is getting really pure. Now, those strawberries that I froze were from fresh, local, organically grown, local farmers' strawberries. Now, I freeze them so I can get that, like, milkshake-y kind of, you know. I ate a lot of them fresh, too, but um, strawberry shortcake with homemade shortbread. <laughs> shortcake, not shortbread. Anyway, all right, back to the thing. It's eight, what is it? Eight minutes, and I haven't even started reading the poem that this is supposed to be. Joy. Let's see if I can get this one out. This one I wrote, finished last week. <clears throat> Second to my Lord, joy is my favorite word. Love is great, and great is good too. Kindness amazes me. Truth is next on my favorites list. Liberty is lovely to me. Nothing is like being free. Free will is a wonderful word. Wait, that's two, no cheating. Silliness, when two loves minds join. <clears throat> yes, that's my favorite meeting. And before I drift and we risk a quarrel, just a quick hat tip to another great one. And this word on my list is squirrel. 
Now there are others, like children and their giggles, pickles and tickles and caterpillars wiggles, singing and springing into muddy puddles and sleeping next to waterfalls and climbing to a mountain's top to breathe the fresh air flowing, smelling a newly opened wild rose, eating a freshly picked wild berry, sitting upon a mossy boulder in the middle of a wilderness stream. The peace, the quiet, if you don't know it, try it. That's it. That's A.D. Boynton, June 24th, 2021. Otherwise known as Hiking Druid on all these, on a, well, a lot of these platforms. And I am just Andrew. But, um, I like the way that flows. It rhymes, but not, you know, like a cheap birthday card. Hickory dickory dock. I've been writing since fourth grade. So those, so those some of those, they're not all bad, but some, <laughs> those greeting cards, oh. I generally, if I ha if I get a card and I don't make one myself, I actually um, get blank ones. Cause, and, unless it's funny, sometimes the funny ones can be pretty good. But um, I'll get blank ones and write my own stuff in there because I just <sighs> call me a word snob. I don't care. I prefer a word smith. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, not a whole lot of people I know read sections of the dictionary with relish and excitement. <laughs> you have to be kind of special to do that. A special kind of writer. You want to know the, um, the core of a word. What, what, you know, words mean things. Rush Limbaugh always would say that. Words mean things. And they mean things based on their roots, where they came from. And how you use them is specific. And you can't just tra-la-la-la-la, reinvent them every few years. <clears throat> it's cataclysmic. Cat <laughs> cataclysmic. You can't just pretend the word doesn't mean what it really means. I've talked about these things before. I'm not going to get into them. No, don't make me. Don't make me. Don't get me started. I want to wrap this up. So I hope you liked Joy. And let me know what you thought about that. Um, should I? Would it help if I actually copied and pasted the poem into the description that's something that's been going through my mind but I, something also making me hesitate from doing that like it might be easier to steal and these haven't really been published well they're copyrighted so ask my permission before you steal it i mean use it somewhere else <laughs> hey but i feel like god gives them to me I give them to you so unless you're going to try to put them together in a book and claim them as your own i don't care if you quote them share them go for it it's supposed to um i'll add to the awakening which i really do feel these uh last few that i've written i have notebooks and notebooks of them i have some like I talked about, I think, in the last video, um, that that are so polished that I should get a book 
I really should get a book together with, with the first set. I even have two different book titles set with the poems organized into them. So you got to take action to get the next step done, right? So I've always been really great at going on to the next project and not finishing the previous one. <laughs> Is that a type of procrastination? I believe it is. And I'd like to talk about this more, but I think I'm gonna put it off till the next video. <laughs> so, you be loving, you be good, be strong. Don't believe everything you've heard. Question everything. Use discernment, and if you don't know what that is, run it past Holy Spirit. And if you don't know what that is, you got to crack the Bible open more, like I told you, and invite him in. He's just waiting for an invitation. And don't expect him to talk to you like a <clears throat> movie from Hollywood, because once you get into the Bible, you realize he has a he has a still, quiet voice. It's very, he wants a relationship with you. So he trained me to listen. He trained me to listen. Because as you can probably, you can probably ascertain that I, I like to talk more than I like to listen. So he's trained me to listen. Right? Two ears. One mouth. Listen two times more than you speak. And when you speak, run it through the sieve of Jesus. Are you, are you growing God's cause? Are you lifting up or are you tearing down? It makes a big difference. It does matter how you treat others, how you represent God in the world, what comes out your mouth, what you speak, what you put in your ears, who you listen to, what you watch, what you put in your mind, garbage in, garbage out. Love in, love out. In through your eyes, in through your ears, out through your mouth, your brain. You're, you're, you're programming yourself because of free will. You're programming yourself through who you surround yourself with, who you listen to, who you watch, what you watch. You know, don't watch junk. Don't watch liars. Don't, don't watch evil. Don't allow evil to pass through. Your eyes are the windows to your soul. That's biblical. So you can, because of free will, you control it. And by not being aware of it, you've made a decision. By not choosing to put that golden love God bubble, and you could put those words in separate, different, several different orders. God's golden love bubble, the love golden bubble of God, doesn't matter. I used to say a wall of love. I'd put a wall of love up. I've always been very aware of people's emotions. They could hit me almost like a cast iron skillet off my forehead. It's like like um, group group rah-rah events, like organized sports and prep rallies in school. Ugh. That kind of unbridled emotion, uncontrolled, souped up, faked up, whatever it is, revved up. That's, that's, that's hard for somebody like me. 
um, anger, fear, even great joy. I, I can enjoy all of these things, these groups, group events, but it, I have to put up the wall or the golden love bubble. And you can protect yourself with that. You can protect your pets with that. Protect your neighbor, your kids, your grandkids, your friends, your parents. Your enemies. Even evil people. You put a you put one of those, and I just want a quick thanks to Michael Jaco, who teaches about these, um, this type of uh, projecting. Um, but it's true because you're creating realities all the, all the, all the day long, and you can create your own suffering and pain, or you can create your own deep joy. So, yes, you could send evil people who are, who are harming children that, that, that want to be able to treat us like cattle in every sense of the word. You can send that golden, God, love bubble, around them. And because they're so evil, it actually weakens them. It, it, it confuses them. It frightens them. And I'm sorry, but they deserve it for what they've done to our children for generations and generations. And you're just sending love. Just send God's true deep, golden light love. They hate that. Evil people hate the light. They hate the light of truth. There's, there's, a, there's a lying light that they pretend is light, but is actually darkness. And that's the little liar that leads all his minions. So you can actually strengthen yourself and your loved ones and you can actually weaken the evil deception msm liars fake news all of that stuff you can weaken that until like this is what we're doing this is the spirit this is the spiritual war it's the higher it's the higher the higher warfare and you know, so you make sure you show yourself, you're, you yourself are, are protected because they'll come at you. But you are much more powerful. We are little Christ-like beings. We are little children of God, little sparks of God. So if you have that relationship going, it's just strengthening you and it's keeping you strong and you're helping others and you're healing others. You're delivering others. You're clothing others. You're feeding others like Jesus teaches. That's why I can go right to the gospel and see what Jesus taught. They, they don't dare mess with that. If they've changed some of the things that some of the people said in the Bible, maybe they've gotten rid of some books. Some really were made up books that didn't belong in there. But some should be in there. Um, but they never got rid of what Jesus said. They daren't do it. They daren't do it. Because they worship the liar. They hate the truth speaker. And of course, Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth, is the king of truth speakers, the Lord of all truth speakers. And truth seekers. That's why you you are you you start to align more and more with Jesus as you seek the truth. You have to, how do you get discernment? It it is through Jesus. Why are we? Why is this all about the children? 
because it's all about Jesus. And Jesus is all about the children. The children are all about Jesus. Why is the evil collapsing? Because of what they did to the children is so offensive to Jesus. See, it, it's the golden circle. It's that's not the eye. No, I wasn't doing the eye. It's the golden circle of love. And God has a sense of humor. Oh, Holy Spirit <laughs> showed me some of my own foolishness in a way that no one could have shown me except him. And then he laughed one time. He laughed with me after he showed me something that I was asking him about in being so, so stupid. <laughs> I was being so stupid, not him. And we had a good laugh and that was amazing. It's, you know, when the creator of the universe is laughing with you, you know, part of him is laughing with you or, or hugs you or comforts you or loves you or encourages you. It's worth it. Take the time, you know, turn the TV off. Now you've got lots of free time. And put the good stuff in from the Bible. Put the good stuff in from the gospel. Remember, open the Bible, go a little bit more to the right, and you get to the gospels, the four gospels, and just start reading them. You know, what Jesus teaches. Remember, it's parable, parables to, to people who are actually trying to trick him. He teaches parables. But then he'll explain them to his followers, which is us, and his disciples. And he explains several places about these parables. And all the things he teaches, I hear some false teachers, God bless them. They're on the right, they're on the right trail of trying to find truth. But they've, they've come from a, like the Eastern religion background that's kind of screwing with their brains. But they say everything he says is parable. That's not true. You know, I've, I have found that when people say everything about everything, about anything, I mean, um, it's, it's, it can't be true because everything is not the same. Everyone is not the same. Every teaching is definitely not the same. Every teacher is, is not the same. There's only one that's still alive and teaches us in the present. That's Jesus. All the rest of them kick the bucket. You can go to where their bones are buried in a shrine. But guess what they found <laughs> in the tomb where Jesus was buried and guarded by some of the most ferocious Soldiers in the ever known in the world, the Roman guard. And then the tomb was empty. Hallelujah. It's so good. It's simple. Yet you need to go to another understanding. And that comes from a relationship. And God is a good papa. He loves all his children. You are a child of the Most High God. You created in his image. These things are true. They're not just superstitions. They're not written by man. They were written by the finger of God. Or the inspiration of God in man, yes. Through man, yes. I have written some poems. And then God has written some poems through me. And some are like a blend. Sometimes I go back and read them and go, I wrote that in 1997? What? And then I go, not by myself, I didn't. I used to call it the muse. But the muse is Holy Spirit. Anyway, this went longer than I thought. I have one mouth, but sometimes it's as fast as two. <laughs> I love you guys.
I wouldn't do this if that weren't true. You know, I have to work on my business. I work from home, reaching people and helping them and serving them. And I have to go do that now. So you guys and girls have a great day. If you enjoy this, give it a rumble, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, whatever platform you happen to see it on. And just know you are loved. God loves you. And so do I. Have a greatness day.